Hey everybody, it's the 3D Printing Professor and my Monoprice Select Mini V2 3D Printer here was having some trouble so I'm, I'm fixing it up and getting it all put back together now and while I do that let's talk about upgrading and maintaining 3D printers and when you should do that and what you should do for that, okay? Hey everybody, welcome back. So this Monoprice Select V2 was having some trouble with the build plate. It was always reading the wrong temperatures, reading about 300 degrees, which means that somewhere there was a short in the temperature sensor wires. So I found out that you that it gets the correct temperature if I pulled the plate all the way forward, which was fine for heating up the build plate and getting it to print, but then when it pulled back, it went back to reading 300, and so it never sent any more heat to the build plate. So the build plate cooled down, which was a problem for the surface material that I'm using. Magic Goo likes to stick only when it's got heat. So when the heat died, prints were falling off. So I'm hoping that by creating this cable uh, strain relief system on here and drilling a hole into the back of my printer and putting a mount in there, that I will take the strain off of that cable that I'll, I'll effectively have it always be pulled forward and be able to fix this problem. We'll see if that works. I've got it all, I've got the parts printed and on here and screwed on here. I've got the uh, plate off and, and unwired. Now I'm going to string it back through and rewire it. But while I do that, let's talk about maintaining 3D printers. Actually, let's talk about tips when you are uh, taking your printer apart. If you want to find where things are, I always find a little piece of masking tape with, in this case, the, the monoprice board is not labeled. So uh, I just drew a little illustration of the board to say where it goes so I won't get confused when I put it back in. The other thing that I found is that this hole is too small for this connector. So I'm gonna have to take this thing apart. So to keep track of where the black wire goes back in, I'm just gonna mark that side of it. I'm not an, uh, an electrical engineer by any means, but it, it's always good to remember where your connectors go, I think. So no 3D printer that costs less than $20,000 is going to be perfect and not require some degree of maintenance and effort to keep it going. You're always going to have to be fiddling with your printers. However, most, uh, most low-end 3D printers are totally moddable. Deep cut there. However, just because you can do an upgrade doesn't mean that you necessarily need to or even should. Most 3D printers work fine most of the time, so why spend the time and headache and effort to do an upgrade if it's not actually going to do much to fix your 3D printer. Plus, you know, once you crack open your, your machine and start fiddling with it, you've invalidated the warranty if you have any. So, you know, beware of that as well. Still, there might be some good reasons, solid reasons for wanting to crack open your printer and fix it and, and make an upgrade. And when should you do that? For instance, right now I'm doing an upgrade to my 3D printer. This cable strain relief was come up with people, or come up with by people who wanted to make their 3D printer better. But I'm only doing it on this printer because it needs it, not because it wants it. So doing a repair, making your computer go, or making your 3D printer go from not working to working is always a good reason to take the, the little bit of extra effort and also upgrade it. I had another monoprice select where the, the extruder head uh, went out and I probably could have fixed it by changing the nozzle or changing the thermistor, but I decided to upgrade to an entirely new uh, E3D end on that one. And so again, it was a good opportunity. I took the opportunity since I had it open to also make it be a bit of an upgrade. Sometimes though, you want to crack open your 3D printer and do an upgrade because it doesn't do something that you want your 3D printer to be able to do. For instance, there's some capability that your 3D printer doesn't have that you want to add to it that it can do. This 3D printer doesn't do flexible materials very well. And so if I wanted to do flexible materials, that might be a good reason to 
do an upgrade. If I had a specific project where I specifically needed to have the ability to print flexible materials, then absolutely, it, that's the time to crack it open and do it. Also, if there's a way that you can make your prints more accurate, more reliable, make it so that a little bit of time spent now will save you a lot of time later, uh, no brainer, do that upgrade and make that work for you. As, as far as I'm concerned, a little bit of time spent now to save you a lot of time later, oh, that's a great deal, absolutely do that. Let's get this back in there. Saw the cables were a little bit twisted, so I'm putting them around. And there we go, everything's hooked back into the motherboard. Now, again, usually I still approach these upgrades when there's a need, and usually that need involves you know, the printer done broke, and it's time to pull it apart and fix it up. But looking at this as an opportunity to make it better than it was before, I think is always a great use of your time and effort. I seem to have misplaced, there it is, my screwdriver. Now, what are some common upgrades that you might wanna to do to your 3D printer? Things to look for when it comes time to upgrade it, or even if you just want to, if you just got it out of the box and you want to consider maybe spending some time on it, investing some time on it, so that your future prints will be even better. Well, number one and maybe easiest to do is, is look at for ways to upgrade your firmware. Uh, it's just a simple software upgrade, but making sure that you have the latest firmware will ensure that your printer right out of the box has the greatest capabilities that it can have. Another one is upgrading your software. Getting a better slicer on your computer can oftentimes lead to better prints. And so it might be worth your while to try out, excuse me, a different slicer than the one that your, that your printer manufacturer recommends. A lot of these printers, especially these older printers or, or cheaper printers, recommend using an old version of Cura. But will the new version of Cura work with your printer? Yeah, maybe, probably. Maybe Slicer, Slick 3-er, if you want, is a, is a good choice for you, and, and you might want to check that out, or even Simplify 3D. You know, I've got a future video coming where I, I talk about why I use Simplify 3D so much, but the short version is, it just makes better prints, and I, I hate to use that reason, and I'll talk about that in the video, but I really feel like Simplify 3D was a great upgrade for my 3D printer, but it did cost a little bit of money, so fair on that. Another common upgrade is to upgrade the build plate. Uh, there are two common upgrades that you can do to the build plate. One, if it's not heated, getting a heated upgrade to your build plate. Now, oftentimes this involves upgrading also your power supply, because if your 3D printer is designed to work with uh, a, a non-heated build plate, it probably does not have a very robust power system because heated build plates require a little bit more power and they probably cut corners by putting a cheaper power supply. So that upgrading to a heated build plate, keep in mind, is going to require some, a little bit more effort than just swapping out a build plate, but the results to your prints are much better. Just the fact that you can get a build plate that is reactive to the heat so it releases when it's done, you'll end up with a lot less tape and goo and stuff stuck to the bottom of your prints after you're done because you can use a build plate like Hairspray or Magic Goo that releases when the heat is gone. The other thing is to upgrade your build plate to be removable. Now, removing a build plate allows you to do a couple of things. One, it allows you to use hairspray that you want to take away from your 3D printer to add to your plate. The second thing that it does is by having at least two identical build plates on hand, you can finish a print, swap it out for, uh, uh, swap your build plates out, and then start another print immediately afterwards. So if you have need to do a production style 3D printing, printing a lot of the same thing or, or even just many different things over and over and you don't wanna to have to wait for that build plate to cool down or for the print to pop off, then being able to swap it out is a 
boon for you. I really like it. There's also upgrading the material, getting Magigoo or PEI or build tack or whatever the build plate du jour is, uh, is another simple upgrade. And that one requires a lot less effort a lot of the time, pr provided you get the right one. Keep in mind that if you use a build plate that is not designed for, uh, he or that is designed for heated build plates, and you don't have a heated build plate, you might want to think about the heated build plate upgrade first. Another common replacement is to replace the plastic parts on your 3D printer for metal parts. A lot of especially cheap 3D printers come with uh, cheap plastic parts. And those plastic parts, while functional, you might want to think about replacing them with something that won't degrade or wear out or die uh, over time and metal replacements are very common. Now that's not happening in this 3D printer. This 3D printer, solid metal construction, this thing is beautiful. But there are some internal things that some people will recommend upgrading. But on my old Replicator 1, yeah, upgrading the, the build carriage and, and the cantilever arms from plastic to metal has improved print quality dramatically. So consider that. It's, it's based on your printer, but swapping out the plastic parts for, for metal parts or even for a higher temp plastic is oftentimes a good idea. We are, after all, working with heat and we are trying to melt plastic. So having plastic parts near your heated build plate or near your hot end maybe not the best idea in the long term and so for long-term reasons you might want to consider upgrading that you know the other and, and the really big reason that i think that a lot of people do upgrade to their 3d printing is to reverse bad engineering uh, sometimes these 3d printers ship with some really poor engineering choices in them and so swapping out parts that will fix those poor engineering choices is always a good choice. Well, so there it is. If you want to, there are some people who enjoy just tinkering, just upgrading their 3D printer and trying to make it the best that they can for whatever reason. But me, I say, wait until there's a need. Wait until there's, there's something that's not working or broken or is very imminent and clear going to break before you crack it open. But then when you do crack it open, see what else you can do while you've got it apart to make it even better. If it's working, I say leave it alone. But if it's not working even just a little bit, go to town on it. That's my opinion on, on doing upgrades. But what's yours? Do you like to do upgrades? Have you done upgrades to 3D printers? And if you had a 3D printer, what upgrades would you make sure to do? And what projects would you be looking to be able to do with your upgraded 3D printer that you can't do with the standard one? Let me know in the comments below. I wanna thank everybody for watching. I wanna thank very much my patrons for supporting me. And there's always room if you want to join. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Safety first, and I'll see you next time. Do you want to know more about 3D printing but don't know where to start? Or did you buy a 3D printer? but you need some help getting it going. Don't panic. The beginner's guide to the 3D printing galaxy is here, now, for you. Buy it on Amazon.